part two uh, of my talk about <laughs> Alistair Unicom's um, Northern Lights winning German list and, and how to make Germans competitive. Uh, I'm sorry about the first one, it got cut off. Um, but uh, in this part two, I'm going to talk about uh, the rest of his list and how he's going to use it. I'm also going to talk about how he's he plans to counterpunch with this list because this is a counterpunch list. It's an, a list that waits for the enemy to to advance to to attack, and then uh, once the attack has stalled or been broken up a bit, he will punch back. So. Um, last time we talked about how he's going to use his heavy mortar and his Nebelwerfer to encourage the enemy to spread out a bit and at the same time encourage the enemy to move towards him so that they don't just stand there getting pummeled by indirect fire. Um, now let's see what he has in the rest of his list and how he's going to use that to counterpunch. He has a horse drawn limber. Now that is pretty useless. But you know why he's bringing it? Because it's possibly the cheapest order dice you can buy in the game. It's eight points. I think a mule team is even cheaper, but a, a horse drawn limber is an eight point order dice. So this is really good. If you want to boost the amount of order dice that you have, and you can do that just to make sure that you get the dice when you want them, that is what you'll need a horse drawn limber. You can also use it to, to pull up your Nebelwerfer or your Heavy Mortar to place it somewhere further up the board. But with the newest facts, it's not really needed. Plus, those two mortars and, and uh, the Nebelwerfer had all, could already move. So it's not really needed. Here is just a cheap order dice that Alistair has bought. A clever idea, by the way. I think you should do that, especially as Germans, because everything is very expensive and you need those order dice. Then he has the motorcycle with machine gun sidecar. I love those motorcycles. They are um, not the best armored cars, because you can buy tanks in this armored car slot, but they are extremely good and very, very annoying. And they're pretty cheap as well. They have an MMG. They have recce and they have turn on the spot, so they are extremely maneuverable for an armored car. The most maneuverable armored car in the game, um, and and they're just they're just so much fun, so fast, so much fun to play, so annoying for the enemy. Um, it's a real, really good uh, unit to counterpunch with or to duel at long ranges, especially if you get the last die of a, a turn, you can move that vehicle up into a, a place where there are no ambushes. You can fire at the enemy, give them a pin, and then when he shoots, you wreck he back. Then he has a Panzer three, Aus E, which is the 8 plus uh, light anti-tank gun version of the Panzer threes. Um, it's a pretty good tank. Yes, the darker stewards are better. Yes, you can buy the Polizei tank, um, but this is just a, a buck standard tank, right? It's pretty cheap. Um, it has the armor that it needs. It has an anti-tank gun. And it has those 12 shots from the MMGs because they're German, right? So it also, it's pretty darker uh, in itself. Um, so maybe not the most optimal of choices, points for value, but in a German list, it is pretty close. Um, and then he has two heavy field cars and a Kugelwagen. All of them regular, because you might want to outflank. But you can also buy them inexperienced. If you're just starting them on the board, you can buy them inexperienced. They'll be work just as fine. They'll use save a few points. Um, these are used for his counterpunch. My guess is that Alistair will deploy his lieutenant pretty close to these two heavy field cars and the Kugelwagen. Maybe even close to the um, Panzer and motorcycle as well. Because then he has a choice. Then he can choose what is it that I want to throw up. Because in one of the heavy field cars his Pioneers is going to be, and in the other heavy field car he's going to have his Herr Grenadiers. So, 
depending on what comes up, what he needs to deal with, what he needs to counterpunch, he can sort of pick, what do I want to throw up? Do I want to just throw up my uh, motorcycle? Do I want to throw up my Panzer III? Do I want my uh, pioneers to go and flame stuff? Or can I just, can I kill it using uh, assault rifles because it's that much further away? You can sort of also calculate the range, right? Because the assault rifles, they will have an effective range of 24 plus 36 inches, right? 12 inches for the, um, the heavy field car, 6 inches out, and then 18 inches. Um, so... So there's a lot of options here, and the Kuberbagen, he's going to put his flamethrower team in that. So he's going to have his regular infantry with rifles on ambush. Then he's going to have his sniper close by, looking down as well, on ambush. And the field cars, the Kuberbagen, with their contents, are going to stay hidden. They're going to stay in cover somewhere, behind line of sight lockers, I think, along with the lieutenant. And then as soon as he can see the option, he'll go, snap to, and throw everything out in one go. Um, because he can. He can snap to multiple units, right? Um, and that is a really heavy counterpunch. If he can get that to work with the snap to, again, I am, I'm really bad at, at doing that. But if he can get that to work... It's a really heavy counterpunch that he can throw at people. Um, and you should be weary of moving up against this list. But on the other hand, you don't want to stay at range either. So do you see what I mean? This is a way to build a list that sort of has all the elements that make Germans competitive. Um, it has the cheap units. It has units that are good points for value, but it also has very expensive stuff. That is really, really killy and can do damage. So this is a really good example of a, uh, a German list of how it's built, of how it's supposed to be played, and what the thought process is behind that. I hope you enjoyed this mini-series. Alistair, thank you so much for the list. It's been a real pleasure. Bye.